Hey guys, welcome to Dogo Argentino USA, the channel for Dogo Argentino enthusiasts who want to enrich their relationship with their Dogo so he or she can become a thriving, respectful, healthy member of your family pack. Today's video is based on an article I read by Carol Beauchamp, PhD of the Institute of Canine Biology. And I wanted to talk about this because I thought it was incredibly insightful and very, very useful if you are interested in preserving the breed of Dogo Argentino. As you may know, at any given time, animal activists, people belonging to the Humane Society of the United States, people for the ethical treatment of animals, are always interested in stopping preservation breeders from being able to continue having purpose-bred dogs. I thought this article was incredibly insightful. It's entitled, Why You Need Population Genetics, The Elevator Pitch. All the useful genetic variation your breed will ever have was in the dogs that founded the breed. This genetic diversity is finite. So what does Carol mean by that? She means that the dogs that created the breed Dogo Argentino are indeed limited. We can't pick a new dog and stick it in the mix and get new genes. All the genes that will ever be present in this breed are currently present in the actual Dogo Argentino population. So when I had my stud tested by Embark, he was 30% inbred. All dogs that belong to a specific species or variation of that species, such as the Dogo Argentino, are inbred because that's how you concentrate the genetics in a particular dog. So he's one-third inbred, and that's actually a reasonable level. Now, when you look at certain breeds like the Dalmatian, as time moves forward, the Dalmatian's problems become more concentrated. This is not to pick on Dalmatians. I love Dals, but this is just to talk about the fact that when you create a breed, there is a limited amount of genetic material that's present in that breed because you can't suddenly mix in a cane corso and call the result of the cane corso and the dogo argentino a purebred dogo argentino because it's not. So when she's talking about the genetic uh, diversity being finite, she means that every dogo argentino alive today is related to every other dogo argentino alive today if they are purebred. And so every good and bad gene is already present in the world. Number two, each generation, alleles can be lost by chance. This is called genetic drift and also through artificial selection by breeders who select for dogs with the traits they like and remove other dogs from the breeding population. So what does she mean here? She's talking about Every time you breed two Dogo Argentinos together, you are picking very specific dogs, preferably the ideal dog that reflects the original description in the breed standard written by Dr. Antonio Martinez. So when you are picking two specific dogs to breed together, by necessity, you are picking not to breed two other dogs together. And so the genes that move forward in the two dogs you picked versus the two dogs you rejected are limited. And the genes in the two dogs that weren't bred don't move forward. And you might have perfectly sound reasons why you didn't pick those two dogs. Maybe they're out of standard. Maybe one has an underbite. Maybe one has a, uh, a coat fault, like a giant black spot on its back. There's different reasons why you might pick two dogs over two other dogs, but every time you do that through each generation, the concentration of available genes becomes even more and more limited. Because we as breeders, we're artificially picking what we consider to be the best examples of the breed, the breeds that are going to look the healthiest, that have the right drive, the right personality. Those are the ones that get picked. Now, there might be a perfectly amazing gene in the dog that didn't get picked, but unfortunately, that doesn't move forward. Number three, because the stud book is closed, genes that are lost cannot be replaced. 
So the dog that you didn't pick, let's say this is dog number four, and dog number four has an underbite and you didn't breed him because his bite is not proper and it's not something you want to pass on into future generations because this is a catch dog. Its purpose is to hold game. But if you eliminate that underbite, you are also eliminating any other positive genes that that animal has inside it. So it might carry a gene for incredible muscular development, but that gene is lost because you're, when you look as a breeder at it, you're saying, okay, well, the underbite is intolerable and I can't breed that dog. So because the stud book is closed, meaning that all the Dogo Argentinos that will ever be on earth are currently alive and their genes are what is being sorted artificially by breeders, Anything that's lost, meaning you, you pick out a negative and you say, I'm not going to breed that dog for that reason, you can't replace it by going, oh, this other dog, I'm just going to throw it in the mix because then your dogs aren't purebred. They're not Dogo Argentino. Unfortunately, number four, so the moment a breed is founded, the moment the stud book is closed, the loss of genetic diversity over time is inevitable and relentless. And what Carol is saying here is that as you move forward in your breeds, let's say you're a breeder, you pick out a beautiful female, a beautiful male, and you reject a male, number four we'll call him because he has an underbite, and that is bad for a catch dog. His genetic material is forever lost because he's not allowed to breed. You don't want that characteristic to move forward. So as the generations continue to move forward, you lose diversity over and over and over again as that population becomes tighter and tighter. No matter how many puppies you produce, you are constantly losing genetic diversity. Number five, you cannot remove just a single gene from the population. You must remove an entire dog and all the genes it has. So if you are removing dog number four, what she means is that that dog number four, he has the underbite. We don't want that to move forward. But what he also might have is incredible muscular development. But that gene isn't moving forward because you've eliminated that dog. That means the next generation from dog one and dog two that you chose to breed, their puppies, let's call them F1 and, and F1A, they only have the genes of their parents to choose from. So when they are later on bred, they can't pick from the genes of dog number four with the underbite. That's just lost when you don't breed them. And so as this moves through time, you are removing an entire selection of genes by eliminating certain dogs. Number six, you cannot select for or against a single gene because genes tend to move in group with other genes, and this is called linkage. If you select four or against one, you select four or against them all, meaning you might breed dog number one because it had perfect structure, and you might breed dog number two that had decent structure but incredible drive because you were trying to produce a top structured hunting dog. Dog number four you don't get to pick, oh, well, I would take all of his genes except for the underbite. When you eliminate that dog, you eliminate everything. And because genes are linked, you have more than one trait you're eliminating or promoting when you breed the dogs together. And that is both good and bad. It's good because as Animal, the way animal husbandry works is you're selecting or trying to select artificially for what you want and trying to artificially select for what you don't want. But as those genes become more concentrated over time, any original flaws that were in the foundational dogs are becoming more and more concentrated, which is why health problems become more apparent in purebred dogs. Although we are very lucky in the Dogo Argentino in that we have lots of different foundational animals that were mixed in. We have the fighting dog of Corvo Cordova, which was our foundational dog. We have the boxer for its personality. We have the bulldog for its chest. 
We have the Pyrean Mastiff for the white color. We have the Irish Wolfhound for its pack hunting ability. We have the Great Dane for its stature and size. We have the Dog de Bordeaux for its powerful head and jaw. The Spanish Mastiff for its powerful head and jaw. We have the Bull Terrier for its tenacity and its courage. And of course, we have the English Pointer for its game scenting ability. So we have a very good and diverse stock in terms of the dogs that we're picking, but we still have some issues. So number seven, breeding for homozygosity of the same traits for homozygosity of all traits. Homozygosity is the kiss of death to the immune system and as genetic variability decreases, so does the ability of the breeder to improve a breed through selection because selection requires variability. So when you're breeding for homozygosity, which is to say when you're breeding for type, meaning you want the dog to look like the breed's standard demands. You want it to be a white dog. You want it to have a dark nose. You want it to have dark eyes. And you're trying to concentrate that by choosing the best of the best. You are also compromising the immune system because immunity is based on diversity. The tighter the genetic population is, over time, the more vulnerable it is to certain threats. And that, unfortunately, is the truth of selective breeding. That's the truth of any selective breeding. And the rarer the dog, the more intense the problems become. So if you look at the modern Doberman Pinscher, which has heart problems now associated with it, it's because there have been so many generations over time that are bred Doberman to Doberman, both the good and the bad become concentrated. And one of the bad things that has become concentrated is a heart problem. Um, our breed, of course, unfortunately, has deafness. And as do, do many white animals, it is not simply white dogs. Uh, the deafness is a problem in our breed. And so as time moves on, if the Dogo Argentino breed is continued, say, 50 years from now, deafness is about 1 in 10 currently, according to the research I have read. 50 years from now, it might be 2 in 10. 20%. In other words, it might have doubled because that population is more inbred as time goes on. Okay, number eight. The consequences of inbreeding in all animals are insidious but obvious if you look. That would include decreased fertility, difficulty whelping, smaller litters, higher puppy mortality, puppies that don't thrive, shorter lifespans, Genetically healthy dogs should get pregnant if mated. They should have large litters of robust puppies with low mortality. Animals that cannot produce viable offspring are removed by natural selection. So what does she mean there? Let's consider the plight of the French bulldog. French bulldogs and English bulldogs both have difficulty whelping, meaning that often they need cesareans because they have been so inbred to the point that their hips do not bear litters well. And so cesarean is not uncommon in both the English bulldog and the French bulldog. A lot of times uh, they have fertility problems. They literally have bred them to a structure that they cannot always mate on their own. And so artificial insemination is very popular with both English Bulldogs and French Bulldogs. We do not yet have that issue, but 50, 60, 100, 200 years from now, we might. Uh, smaller litters, higher puppy mortality, puppies that don't thrive, shorter lifespans. These are things that happen with animal husbandry, especially when you're starting with a very, very small group. My understanding, and I could be wrong, but my understanding based on what I read was... Dr. Martinez started at the height of his program with 30 female bitches. 30. That's it. That's how many there were. And so all of those genes are present in our modern Dogo Argentinos, just as every single Dogo Argentino on earth is related 
to one degree or another to every other Dogo Argentina, which is what makes them a variety in the first place. So over time, you are faced with different problems in the breed based on the fact that you have concentrated those genes. Number nine, mutations of dominant genes are removed from the population if they reduce fitness. Recessive mutations have no effect unless they are homozygous. Consequently, rare mutations are not removed. They are inherited from one generation to the next, and every animal has many of them. So in our case, in the Dogo Argentino's case, we have deafness. That is not the only rare mutation that is related to our dog. That just happens to be the one that's best known. As time moves forward, other types of rare mutations are going to pop up. But again, we do have some protection because of the many outcrossings that were made in the foundation of our breed. And because Dr. Martinez was a surgeon and a medical scholar, he understood genetics really, really well. And he did his best to protect us against it. But being a rare breed, we are going to see this in coming generations. So unfortunately, as time moves forward, rare mutations, which may not be visible to the average person now, will become more visible and more dominant as time moves forward. So number 10, if you create a bunch of puppies from your favorite sire, you are making dozens and dozens of copies of all the bad mutations in that dog, which were never a problem before because they were recessive, i.e. C number nine, the mutations we just talked about and they were dispersing them out into the population. Now a previously rare mutation has become common. Its frequency in the population increases, and the chances go up that a puppy will be produced that is homozygous, meaning that it has two copies of a bad allele. And homozygous recessive alleles are no longer silent. So what that means is like, let's look at one of our our famous dogs of the past. Let's look at uh, Lacocha's Morocho. He is a dog that many dogs have in their pedigree. And from a breeder's perspective, there is some question that he is in so many pedigrees because he was a famous dog. And it's quite possible that several people hung paper, meaning they claimed a relationship genetically to that dog that doesn't exist. That actually works in our favor because you don't want a particular stud producing tons and tons and tons of puppies. When they produce bunches of puppies, all the negative traits that are in that dog become scattered in the puppies that he creates, and those can actually affect the entire breed. So number 11. So genetic disorders caused by recessive alleles don't suddenly appear in a breed. The defective gene was probably there all along, but if you make a million copies, you make a zillion copies and suddenly you have a disease. So in the Doberman Pinscher's case, there's some dog in the past that was bred and that dog had a condition of the heart. And that copy, because it was probably a beautiful dog and a dog with perfect temperament and a dog that reflected what was the ideal Doberman Pinscher. Over time, that gene became concentrated, and now it is not unusual to find Doberman Pinschers with heart problems with short lifespans. Uh, Different breeds have different types of problems that have been carried forward based on the foundational stock that they had. So in Dalmatians, uh, you can see that a lot of Dalmatians of today have liver problems and they have blood problems. Those are because they had some bad copies of those alleles that moved forward. Number 12, using DNA testing to try to remove diseases, excuse me, using DNA testing to try to remove disease genes from the breed will not make the dogs healthier because of number two, number five, and number six, which is uh, essentially the genes that move forward are artificially selected. And so the genes that don't move forward, because let's go back to our example, dog number four with the underbite, 
you can't just pick the good genes out and go, well, I'm just going to put that in a Petri dish and move that forward. So that is a problem. Um, you can't select for a single gene, meaning, oh, well, you know, dog number four had an underbite, but he had great musculature, so I'll just pick that. You're just going to completely eliminate that dog in terms of its ability to breed and move its genetics forward. And of course, uh, you, you really only get the chance to either accept the dog or reject the dog from your breeding program. And there's always reasons why you should do that as a thoughtful breeder. When you are interested in choosing dogs to mate, hopefully, if you're an educated breeder, if you're a responsible breeder, you're not going to pick a dog with a major fault like an underbite. You're going to pick a dog that's uh, bite is perfect because that, that form of the bite makes the dog effective at being a catch dog in the Dogo Argentino's case. You wouldn't want a dog with an underbite because it wouldn't be as effective. But unfortunately, when you eliminate that dog because it's got that bite, you're also eliminating all the good things that are in that dog. And you're further concentrating the genetic population over and over, which only becomes worse as time goes on. So DNA testing may tell you whether your particular dog has uh, a genetic problem like both Serena and Zeus, my my older female and my stud have been genetically tested and cleared by Embark, but you can't, the testing doesn't do anything to basically take away the concentration as a breed moving forward. So number 13, Carol writes, the breed will continue to lose genes every generation, either by chance or by selection until the gene pool no longer has the genes necessary to build a healthy dog. So that is really where many dogs are that are very old breeds, like the Dalmatian. The Dalmatian has become so inbred over time. The Dalmatian of my youth, and I will be 50 in June, uh, had very individual and non uh, non-patchy type spots. Their spots did not touch and that was not really an acceptable coat pattern. But because there are so few Dalmatians, the Dalmatian of today, it's very common to see their spots actually touching each other. That wasn't the way it was when I was a child. So unfortunately, there is a need for them to open up their stud book and start taking non-Dalmatians in to try to reinvigorate the breed. And they're going to have to face that decision just as we in 50 years may very well need to face that same decision. So number 14, at this point, the breed might look wonderful because of selection for type, but it will suffer from the ill effects of genetic impoverishment inbreeding, depression, diseases caused by recessive alleles, the risk for cancer, etc. And what Carol's talking about here is something that you can see illustrated in the Golden Retriever. The Golden Retriever of today is a beautiful dog and it has very consistent type over all Golden Retrievers. But unfortunately, it does suffer from the ill effects of genetic impoverishment. And this can be seen in the fact that so many golden retrievers die at around six or seven years of cancer because that breed, uh, that, that particular gene became concentrated. And while the dog looks great, it has a hidden gene. We don't have the ability genetically even today to scan for all the possible negative recessive genes that a particular animal could be carrying. And as a breeder, to a certain degree, we are playing God. We're picking the dogs that we want to have genetic uh, continuation or genetic extinction, meaning the ones that we pick to breed and the ones we pick not to breed. Number 15, the health of individual dogs cannot be improved without improving the genetic health of the breed. And the only way to improve the genetic health of the breed is to manage the health of the breed's gene pool. So back to our, our case with the Dalmatian, there may become a point where they just cannot improve the health of Dalmatians unless they open up the stud book 
and they take some non-Dalmatians in to help inject vigor into the breed to give fresh genes that will be passed on and passed through the breed to help eliminate some of the problems. Now, the Dogo Argentino does have problems. Um, Certainly, deafness is one of them. And while we do have the genetic vigor of a hybrid because our creator used so many different breeds to create the Dogo Argentino, eventually over time, and especially as the breed becomes more popular and those genes are sorted in a very specific and artificial way, we too might have to choose a dog of a different variety to mix in in order to improve the overall genetic health of those dogs. Number 16. Population genetics provides tools for the genetic management of breeds and other groups of animals. Breeders can improve the health of the dogs they breed if they understand and use them. So genetics are a tool that allow us to select and deselect certain traits, but oftentimes many other traits are connected to them. This is why eugenics or human selection of traits is not considered ethical because you might, and this was unfortunately popular during the racist earlier history of the United States, you might want to pick a particular individual and sterilize them based on your wish not to have those traits continue on. And this unfortunately happened often without the consent of individuals. So for example, it was not uncommon in the early 1900s to forcibly sterilize people who were what they considered to be of diminished capacity i.e. perhaps somebody that was uh, developmentally delayed, just as an example. And they also took people that they considered to be of diminished capacity because of character. So if you were a young boy who was convicted of truancy from school, they might have also, against your will, sterilized you because they didn't want that type of characteristic to move forward. So in dogs, we have a somewhat similar condition in that we're choosing certain things because we want certain things to be produced. You're not going to pick the sickly dog that has allergies to breed because you don't want the sickly allergies to be concentrated and carried on in the pups. But let's say there was, just as an example, this is not numerically accurate, but let's say there's 10 genes in total in that dog and you feel that the allergies don't allow you to breed it, but the other genes are actually great. Let's say one is a gene that happens to have slightly longer life, and one is a gene that has slightly better eyesight, or slightly better hearing, or slightly better sense of smell. But because it has allergies, you're eliminating all the good by getting rid of the bad, and that's the nature of genetics. Um, I really found this this article very, very interesting. Again, it's by Carol Beauchat, PhD, titled Why You Need Population Genetics, The Elevator Pitch from the Institute of Canine Biology. You can read it for yourself at www.instituteofcaninebiology.org. Um, I'm very interested in genetics, and I hope that you guys are too, because genetics are the basis of dog breeding. And if dog breeding is something that interests you, you really do need to understand the consequences of genetics. And although I myself am not a geneticist, I do have a better than average understanding of genetics. If you put 100 people in a room and none of them were geneticists or biologists, chances are I probably know more than average. I'm not saying that to brag. I'm just saying that to emphasize the value of genetics when it comes to dog breeding. So if you guys are actually interested in genetics and some of the consequence of animal husbandry, let me know in the comments because I'm really considering doing a long set of videos based on genetics so that you guys have a better understanding of how they come into play in terms of the overall health of the Dogo and Argentino and also how it would affect you specifically, if you happen to 
feel that you have a mentor close by that is willing to help you should you wish to get into breeding, which is a whole different can of worms. But there's there's things that that I think are very important that people understand that if I can help you understand that, then I feel like I'm doing a service to the Dogo Argentino breed. But if you have no interest whatsoever in genetics, please also let me know in the comments because these videos are very in-depth. They have a, a scientific vibe to them. And if that's not what you want to see on this channel in terms of content, I don't want to waste my time creating content that you guys aren't interested in. So let me know what you think. As always, like, comment, share, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and have a dogotastic day.